Good day everyone, it's Ron Brown. Today I'd like to talk to you about club management, but on a limited budget. Now the audience today are varied, but most of all you'll be involved with the administration of your club in some sort. This is an EVAC meeting, which is the East Valley of Association of Computer Clubs, so it will be, you'll be involved in your club some way. You come today because you're concerned. You're probably wondering what can you learn. Now, most of you also are coming back to a situation where you didn't have physical meetings last year and you're wondering how you're going to run your club. How are you going to make it run with dwindling resources? Fewer people, maybe they're not coming back and you have limited or no budget. Maybe you're a very small club, you're wondering how to get going. So I'm gonna teach you today the things that you need to know to make your club successful. Many things you don't need to know, but I'm gonna tell you today what I think you should be doing, how you can manage your club to be successful. So the purpose of this video, the purpose is to provide useful information for the executive of computer clubs. It's to, identify information that you should know and it should share my information learned so no mistakes are repeated uh, this video is on YouTube so you should please be free to share it with members of your club now I'd like to look at the different parts of your club and how you might organize them let's have a look at this the first will be your club membership you may have a small membership or you may have a large membership. But if you are going to have a membership, you do require some way of recording it. Now that recording could be done in a ledger. It could be done in a book, as simple as that. You simply take a book and say, Ron Brown paid and tick it off. Very simple. Everyone can do it. Then you might have someone that wants to put it on a spreadsheet. Spreadsheets are great. Uh, this is cool. Again, you're going to limit the number of people that can do it because you they don't know how to use a spreadsheet. Or in my case, we put it into an integrated software management program called the CRM. This was really cool. It did some incredible things. I had one person trained who would take the information from paper and enter the data in. Uh, one person out of the whole club that would do it, right? And when that person left, we can't find anybody else to do it. So remember when you're doing tasks and trying to decide what you're gonna do and how you're gonna do the management of your club, remember the more technical you get, it's like a pyramid. The more technical you get, the fewer the people that can do it. And when you're looking at a club that has very few people that are willing to step up and, and put some effort in, you really have to consider this. So sometimes going back to the good old ledger, taking it off is the best way to do it. All right, so if you're going to keep a membership list, you probably want dues. And so maybe you're going to have dues and you're going to need some sort of accounting, some sort of, some sort of way of, uh, of, of keeping track of who paid and who hasn't paid. And again, uh, this comes back to how you want to manage that. Of course, there are great online systems where people can just log in. They can pay by their credit cards. Boom, it's all organized for you. But will your club accept that? And will you have people that can organize that and do that? So again, coming back to when you're planning your club, sometimes getting a ledger. Sometimes simply next to Ron Brown, ticking off on your club, saying he's paid, but he paid $10 to join the club. Sometimes doing a paper version is so much easier and you broaden your base so that you now anybody in the club can do that job. Once you get over that and into the, the accounting part of the club, most of it is very simple. Although you do have larger clubs with two or 300 people in where it becomes more complicated. And usually within your club, you'll have somebody who has a financial background, could be a retired accountant, somebody who's worked with figures and numbers before, they will usually take up the cause and they will usually help you. And their goal is uh, to use the software they've been knowledgeable about all their life. 
So whether they use QuickBooks, whether they put it on a spreadsheet, whether they use any sort of other software, that they'll usually have something that they like to use, and that's their, 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 uh, the way they like to do it. And again, in, in the case of um, our, our club, we had as well an integrated package into our the club management software, but we didn't use that. We left it to the accounting people that helped us with the books and that. But remember, as you go up and make things more complex, you have fewer people that are going to help you. Then we come to your communication within your club. You're probably going to want to have some newsletter. You're going to have you want to contact your members in some way. So let's talk. We're going to talk about newsletters. Uh, maybe you think you should have a website. Is that a good idea? We'll talk about that. Um, you may want to advertise in your resorts uh, on your resorts website or in news in your newsletter. And for sure, you probably want some sort of calendar that you can communicate with other members of your club. So what's the way we could do this? You also probably have a program chair and maybe an educational staff, someone that's going to help you with the SIGs, maybe some SIG leaders. And so there'd be some communication there. I'm not going to talk a lot about program chair and education staff, largely because that's what I've done for 10 years. And I have other videos on that. Then the last thing is uh, there is, of course, the president, and you may be the president here today. There is the board of directors. You need club bylaws, a mission statement. Those all sound like very complicated things, and for sure, they're a lot of work. So the one of the key parts to the advice I can give you is please, if you are considering starting a club or you have or you're just getting going, please contact APCUG. That's the Association of Personal Computer User Groups, and it's your national organization uh, that, that is all across Canada and the United States that will help you get your club going. The dues for each year are $50 a year. Uh, they will provide you with all the bylaws and help you get the whole thing set up. So it's already done for you. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. It's already there. They will help you set that all up. Very good organization and they might even have a special deal for you if you're just getting started. So give them a call. I'll put a link uh, in the uh, bottom uh, in the show notes of this so that you can uh, you can contact them. But very good resource and I would encourage you to uh, use APCUG. Now you may be considering doing the things we've just talked about and finding a club software that will actually do all the things? Is there something that's available for you that will actually do all this? Let's not reinvent the wheel. That's exactly what Bob and I thought 10 years ago when we started working with our clubs. Is there something out on the market that would do all this for us? Let's, let's start with that so we don't have to reinvent the wheel. And we did. Uh, we looked at all the various um, software at that time and we chose a company called Green Rope. Green Rope had um, Green Rope had a product called My Club Circle. Now Green Rope really didn't make club software. This was called CRM software which is customer relationship management. Complicated word but basically it's a um, it's a sales orientated software. And they spun off the product called My Club Circle, which we started to use, and they offered it to clubs sort of as a free giveaway at a very reduced cost. And we looked at this, evaluated it, and a number of clubs in the EVAC uh, area uh, have all um, used this for, for a long period of time. And some of you here uh, in the meeting today uh, are still using this software, as, as we are. And so we've had about 10 years of experience with it. And the software really wasn't very good to start with. It's got somewhat better over the years. It's not available anymore. They do not uh, make My Club Circle. My Club Circle wasn't specific software. It was just software that it gave away uh, to the clubs for a reduced price. So there's nothing really unique about it for clubs, right? And this caused uh, a lot of problems over the 10 years. Part of it is because it doesn't do exactly what we wanted to do 
And also, it's extremely complicated. So it's very the, the learning curve for this is, is very, very high. So it's not my recommendation that we use this anymore. In fact, our club's going to be changing, and I'll talk a little bit about that later. So what would be my recommendation if you wanted to go out and say, I'm going to computerize our club and we want? Well, the, uh, the one that um, is clearly the leader in my recommendation is qu called Wild Apricot. This has been around a long time. There's over 4,000 clubs in the United States that use this. It's uh, won lots of awards, and it's like a glove. You simply sign up, and you can put the glove on, and it does everything you would want for your club. And I'm going to give you a bit of a, a, a video now. There's a promotional video from Wild Apricot. But this is clearly the winner in all categories. I've looked at looked at many, many, many software, and this is clearly the winner. For under 50 contacts, it's free. Um, for about 100 contacts, it's $40 a month. And you can see the, the list as we go up uh, on the screen here. And I'm going to let you watch the video. There's a very short video on it. But if you want to go down the route and you want to computerize and do some of the things we've talked about, this is my recommendation. But you must remember there's still a learning curve. You still are going to have to have people in your club that are going to buy into this and actually use it. I'm not sure that's the way you should go, but you have to look at that within your own club. But for certainly some of the clubs like uh, Leisure World, uh, this would be an excellent alternative to, uh, to My Club Circle. All right, let's watch the video now and you can have a look. Hi there, I'm Terry from Wild Apricot, the number one membership management software on the market. And in under a minute, I'm going to give you five reasons why over 3,500 clubs use Wild Apricot every single day to run their organization so that you can see if Wild Apricot is right for you. So here we go. Firstly, if you'd like a professional looking website, Wild Apricot can give you one in seconds. And it's easy to choose from any of our pre-built templates and start making changes right away. Second, you can start accepting online payments right away. Wild Apricot will automate all of your renewals, invoices, and receipts. You won't have to lift a finger. Third, forget about Excel. Wild Apricot gives you an organized, searchable database, and your member info is automatically updated as soon as someone registers for an event or pays online. Fourth, our emailing system integrates with the database, and you can choose from dozens of beautifully designed email and newsletter templates. And fifth, you can even manage your membership from any device with our free mobile app. And there you have it, five reasons why Wild Apricot can save you so much time and make your life so much easier. And I'd encourage you to start a free trial of Wild Apricot now. Over 50 organizations just like yours start a free trial every single day. So if you'd like to see if Wild Apricot is right for your club, click the free trial button now. Now I want you to be aware of Old Joe. Old Joe is a person in your club who will be a kind soul. He will work tirelessly on your web page for a number of years. In fact, you've delegated the responsibility for maybe your email, your website, and so on to old Joe. And he's looked after it forever. The problem is old Joe died. And he took with him the passwords to the login and the ownership. He, he is the ownership of your domain name, your website, and your hosting site. So he took all those with him, or it could be a disgruntled person who just left. So one of the important things as administrators in your club, and we'll talk about this in a few minutes, is you're going to be looking at the ownership of the software and who the registration of the website is and who owns the domain name. It is so important that it's your club and not an individual. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. All right, let me make a recommendation for your club. Your club obviously will need an email address. My advice is that you use a Gmail account. You can set this up, and I want you to set it up with your club's ownership. So when you sign up for your Gmail, well, the name of the first name of uh, the person you're gonna register could be president, and then the name of the individual, the last name, the surname, could be Silvercom CTC. And then you create the account with that person in on there, but it really is for your club. And the club then would own that, that name 
and it would have the uh, user login and password would be uh, saved for the club. And there are a number of reasons why I like Gmail. Uh, first of all, it's easy to use. Everybody uses it. Uh, it also comes with a Google account. So you're not just getting an email address, but you're getting an account. You're going to have some cloud storage and a very easy website builder, which we're going to talk about in a minute. And it's free. It also allows you some identification because when we go and we look and we're going to want to maybe get a domain name or we're going to want to build a website or we're going to want to register with Facebook, we need to say who we are. And now we have a website, or sorry, now we have an email address that we can use for further identification. Let me show you how that works. All right, the next thing that comes along is you should uh, consider should you have a website? Big, important decision. Or is it really? Um, if you pull the group of people you have in your club, you'll probably find there will be groups There'll be people in your club that think websites causes cancer and there should be no reason why you would ever want a website. And there are other people in your club that think websites should make ice cream, right? So you have this wide diversity of opinion. And I've had a website now for our club for 10 years. I can tell you that uh, I've put, well, probably thousands of hours of work into it. Nobody ever looks at it. Not important. It is sort of important when the club's working and the club's busy. Uh, there are some, there's some traffic there, but most of the time there isn't. So you have to think about traffic flow. I call it EV, energy versus value. And also remember old Joe. Remember, you want this to be in the club's name. We're going to, I think, I think websites are fine, but I think it probably could be a static site. I think it would contain the info for your club. It would contain the club, um, the officers, maybe the history of the club, and point in the direction that you want people to go. But I think a static uh, site that you, maybe you change um, the information on that site once a year when the club turns over is probably all you need. Now, if you have a complex club and you're using this uh, for a lot of different things, then yes, maybe that's fine. But think small. And remember, I'm going to show you how easy it is to create a static website. Anyone in this room can do it. So again, we're looking at people and resources. So you don't want to make this very, very simple. And there's certainly lots of uh, YouTube videos on how to do this, but I'm going to show you how simple it's going to be for you. Now I'm going to show you how to create a web page using Google Drive. Uh, you will have already created a Google account because remember I told you that I wanted you to create a, uh, a Gmail address as we discussed in the previous slides. So now you, when you create that Gmail address, it also creates a Google account for you under that, that individual. Not only does it give you a Google account, but it gives you a web space, it gives you space in the cloud, and also gives you a suite of software that you can use to do various things. And one of the things that we're gonna to do today is we're gonna build a new website. Now, uh, many of you haven't done that, but we're gonna do it in about 30 seconds. So uh, I, I'm going to um, uh, show you how easy this is and it's again it's free so you'll see my computer uh, this is my computer uh, screen here we're of course in um, in the chrome browser we're going to come up to the nine dot menu here on the right you'll see that i am logged into my account you'll see my little picture here we'll click the nine dot menu and we're going to come down to google drive and we're going to click on google drive and of course if you just create an account there won't be anything in google drive but we're going to bring up google drive uh, now, uh, in Google Drive, you'll see uh, it's loading all my files, but we're going to come up to the left side here in the little plus button on the left side, and we're going to click this plus new, and watch what happens. As you look here on the menu, uh, you'll see that there's Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides. When we go to more, we're going to come down to Google Sites. Google Sites is your web building uh, software, 
and we're going to click on sites and start a new web page. Let's see how this is done. Remember, this is your free web building software that's included with Google uh, Drive. And this is now brought up in Google Sites. It's brought up uh, our brand new web page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in here. We'll just take this and say this is uh, my new web page. Okay. And then uh, I have already pre, uh, we're going to add a text box in here and we'll add it to add our text box right here. Now I have already uh, taken off our existing web page and copied some information in onto the clipboard. So all I'm going to do is paste it and there is all the information about our club. And now we have my new web page. We have it all there. And all you have to do is come up here and you see this blue button, hit publish. You now have a web page called My New Web Page with some information about your club. So you could have somebody, and it really doesn't matter what document you create this in, you could have someone in your club have a, uh, a Word document or any sort of document you want. They could update your club members, club uh, executive officers, whatever you want to put on the website. And once a year, you just copy that page over, uh, put it into, the, uh, into this uh, uh, web page builder and hit publish and, and your website will be published. How simple is that? All right, this is uh, Tech for Seniors website. Uh, this is uh, a site that I built for Tech for Senior about uh, eight months ago. Uh, this is, uh, of course, built on Google Sites, uh, just as I've showed you. Uh, it is uh, a little more complicated. I have lots of fun and learned a, <clears throat> learned a lot doing it. It was. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Mailchimp in a minute. Um, it wasn't Mailchimp's website building wasn't available uh, when I started this. Um, but uh, I own this, I, uh, I can change it, uh, I can um, add it. And if you look here, you'll see that I want you to notice this Tech for Senior newsletter here. Uh, when you sign up for our newsletter, it uh, ports its, the information over to uh, MailChimp to add to our outgoing mail service. And I'll explain that in a little, little, uh, little bit later in the video. So I'm really happy with this. Now this is a very busy website. We have hundreds of people coming to this site every day. Uh, there's all sorts of links in there that I've put in. So you can make it as complicated or as simple as you want. Now uh, you can, I've asked you prior to this meeting today to look at uh, the website that was uh, built for our club with my club circle. This is Silvercom CTC and you can look at it. And it's sort of a dead site, even though it was a little more complicated to do with the my club circle software. But again, my club circle provided the software to build it and it's sort of there and it really isn't getting any use. Whereas this is a very busy site and we have a lot of, a lot of traffic with this site. Now, uh, there really are three parts to a website that you need to be aware of. And this is extremely important. Uh, one of the things, of course, you'll just look at, you're going to say, but, 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 Ron, what's the domain name? All right, let's talk about domain names. What is a domain name? Well, a domain name is something like silvercomctc.com, or it is something like um, Tech for Senior. Dot com. People always wonder why I didn't get uh, Tech for Seniors with an S in there. Well, it was taken. I couldn't buy that, techforseniors.com, so it was techforsenior.com. So <clears throat> that is a domain name. Now, in addition to building a website like we just did, we have to decide, okay, that, that would be a, a website that would be called um, Google Sites at something da 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 da. So maybe we would want it to be our own domain, so it would be silvercomctc.com. So whenever anyone went to silvercomctc.com, our website would come up. Otherwise, they'd have to use the Google name, right? So you might want your own domain name, which is fine. Uh, now, the cost of a domain name is around $30 or, or less. It's, it's cheap. Uh, you should be aware that uh, the new domain, uh, some of the new domains that are available now are .club. So instead of .com, you actually can get a .club. So you might look at that for your club. So 
What is important, though, is that you understand how this works. Uh, there are, in the United States, uh, <clears throat> a number of companies that are what we call our domain registrars. These are people where you can buy and sell domain names from. Now, there are not a lot of them, but there are. Uh, they are in popular ones that you probably know about are called GoDaddy is one of them. That's probably the most popular one. Uh, the one that, and that's the one I use for Tech for Senior, but our Silvercom CTC website is uh, is from Enom, E-N-O-M. And when I registered it with them, I said, who the heck are you? And they laughed and they said, we have a bigger building than GoDaddy. They're just down the street. So I haven't been to Seattle, but apparently they have a, a big building <laughs> in Seattle. So GoDaddy Clear is the is clearly the uh, the popular one. Is it difficult to buy a website from GoDaddy? Well, let me tell you, it's very interesting. If you can purchase anything on Amazon, you can easily buy a website on GoDaddy. A GoDaddy uh, will, has deals of the day, specials, all sorts of stuff. You can buy and sell websites on there. It's, it's, it's a hoot. You really should go and see it in action. Anyway, um, I did... Uh, by Tech for Senior at uh, at GoDaddy, and I'm registered there. Now I linked the um, Tech for Senior domain then over to the uh, Google Sites. So now when you type in um, um, TechForSenior.com, it brings up my uh, Google um, site. Uh, uh, as the, as the website, right? Simple to do, um, and and again, your your the software you built for Google with Google is free, and so the only cost would be the purchase of it, which would be about thirty dollars for your domain name, and then there's usually an annual registration fee. Again, it's so important that your club owns this. One of the pitfalls is, is when you let old Joe uh, build your website, old Joe goes and buys the, uh, buys the domain name in his name. And then of course, when he leaves with the passcodes, you are really in big trouble because you can't get into your site and they will not transfer the, this is my site, it's my site, it's my site. Well, if you don't have the password, you can't get into it and you're not gonna be able to use it. So it's so important that you have ownership of this. Now, the second part is, of course, the software used to build your website. Uh, you uh, and let me tell you that the that, that that's a topic that could go on not just for days, for weeks. But in in a nutshell, let me tell you this: um, WordPress is the big seventy percent of the world's websites are all built on a software called WordPress. Uh, there's also other ones like Wix, um, and we could go on and on and on. But that is software. And, and when you, um, if you wish, you could go and you could have a WordPress software, uh, a website designed for you under the WordPress software. Or, or in fact, someone in your club might say, I can do a website. I'm great. You know, I have, I have all this knowledge and I can build you a, a great website using, the, using this software. And it doesn't matter what software they use, but remember, they are going to have control over that software. Also, um, if you don't understand WordPress, you don't understand how to program in it, then it adds another level of complexity. Anyone can, of course, um, you know, build a website using Google Sites like I showed you because there is no real skill required in that. So you have to think about that when you're deciding what you want. And then the third thing is, where is the website hosted? Now, if you look at, let's take My Club Circle. Uh, My Club Circle provided the website software to build the site. Uh, they provided the hosting site. In other words, the, 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 the part in the cloud, the, the hard drive in the cloud that, of course, will host the site. And that was provided by uh, Green Rope or My Club Circle. Uh, in the case of Google, Google provided the software and it provided the um, the place where you store because you have a Google account. It's the place where you would store uh, your website as well. Uh, if you went to a WordPress site, then again, WordPress is just software. You'd have to decide the domain name and where you want actually to park the site. Uh, Mailchimp, uh, which we'll talk about again, has its own 
super easy website builder. They will register your domain. They'll create a domain for you. They'll look after the website. You can build your website. It's all integrated into MailChimp. We'll talk about that in a minute. But those are the three parts to your website. You have to, if you want a domain, you don't have to have a domain. Um, then you need that, which is about $30. You can um, build your uh, website with um, with Google Sites, uh, which is great. Or you can use, uh, which we'll talk about in a minute, MailChimp. Or if you want to have it done for you using one of the other services we discussed, then that's okay as well. All right. If you have a small club, let's say around 20 to 30 members, then I think you should really consider Gmail as an excellent option. Let me tell you why. First of all, it gives you an email address, and so you'll have your own club email as we discussed before. Included in that, you get your Google account, and with your Google account, you'll get Google Sites, which gives you your web, uh, you can put a static or a dynamic website up, which I've shown you. Uh, it gives you Google Calendar, so you can schedule things and you can look at, uh, um, keep in touch with your with your group uh, with the calendar. Um, it gives you uh, some online storage. It gives you 15 gigabytes, so if you want to put minutes, you want to put uh, any documents online, and you can share those documents, that's fine. Uh, it gives you a suite of applications. I'm not going to go into that now, but you know it gives you Google Docs, Google Slides, and all that. So it gives you a whole suite of application. And it gives you a database. Your database, of course, is your contact list, all right? And I think that's uh, that does very well. And so <clears throat> this is a good package if you have a small club to run your club's operation with. I want to caution you, though, on one thing, and that's to do with email. Now, I've had this discussion with Google a number of times, and Gmail really is not meant for sending out bulk email. Um, and, and that's a, a takeaway message that you have to get. And you don't want to get caught up in, a span, uh, caught up in an argument with Google uh, regarding your, uh, the amount of email that you're sending. Uh, if you are going to send bulk email, and, I, and we'll talk a little bit what I mean by that in a second, uh, then Google Groups or MailChimp, what we're going to talk about next, is a much better, better option. But for the smaller clubs, you probably aren't going to be sending enough email that it's going to make a difference. But let me show you. The number of messages you can send per day uh, is interesting. It's 2,000. Wow, that sounds like a lot. However, if you look down here, you'll see the, rec and I got this off the uh, Google site today uh, in their support. If you look at the uh, number of recipients, um, the number of recipients per message, it's 100, all right? And so you can only send it out in groups of 100. Now, that isn't going to work for an organization like Tech for, Tech for Senior, where we send out just under 1,000 1, emails. So it's not, it's not going to work. And uh, so in a small club, this will work. But for a larger club like Leisure World or Viewpoint, it, or even Silvercom CTC, it's just not an option because you're going to be sending too much email out, and it won't work with Gmail. But certainly a smaller club, this is, uh, is an excellent, excellent option for you. Not, not the best one and the one that I'm going to recommend, but this is a good package for you, and I think you should consider it. And it's also free. All right, let's look at the next one. Let me just explain uh, about Tech for Seniors. Uh, this is, of course, a project I'm sure you uh, know I'm, I'm very involved with. And in setting up this project, I wanted to get it right. So I looked for about two months for the tools that I would need to, um, to create uh, a database, have an email program, and a website. I wanted to get it right. Uh, I, I've had a lot of experience with this before, and I wanted to do it right this time, so I did my homework. And I, uh, again, did a lot of research uh, on the internet, and I talked to some a lot of people, some they, a lot of people I owe big time for because they really helped me a lot. And in the end, there was one company that kept coming back, and that was Mailchimp. Now, this is not really, uh, you, it's not a be all and end all for everyone, but it certainly filled the bill for what I had. I couldn't find any other company that offered the same services, and. 
Tech for Seniors is all volunteer. Uh, there's no money being generated from it, so we have no budget, so it had to be free. And so this, again, fell in line with sort of our computer clubs, uh, you know, how they would want it as well, because it should be free. So we looked at, um, so anyway, I, I we went ahead and I uh, developed a relationship with uh, MailChimp. So MailChimp holds our database. It sends out uh, just under a thousand email for us, and it um, it keeps. Um, and that's how we we run Tech for Senior. The uh, website for Tech for Senior, which is a very busy website, is linked back to a a Google site. So I manage the Google site, and uh, and the two are are linked, which which works well. I don't believe, and I can't remember about a year ago when I set this up, if uh, if Mailchimp was really into hosting and all the services they have now, and that even gets better. So uh, in as I've told you before, we're our club is leaving my club circle. Uh, whether I decide yet to have MailChimp as our um, as our web hosting. I'm not sure yet. Uh, I think I will uh, because here's here's what's so cool about it. But let me tell you a bit about the company first of all. Um, it's a, it's a U.S. company. It's uh, out of Atlanta, Georgia. They have about 11 million customers. Uh, as of this was 2019, so it's a lot more than that now. Uh, I read an article saying they get 15,000 customers a day. Uh, their annual revenue in 2019 was just under a billion dollars, and now they offer a full marketing platform. So it is a big company, and it's growing very rapidly. So they offer some very unique things in their free package, which I can't find any other organization that does this. I may there may be some that out there, but I don't know. And here's what's what's so uh, important. First of all, it's free, and well, they have a tiered tiered level for paying, uh, but but under the free plan, uh, you can have up to two thousand contacts. Um, so so. And, and the database is very easy to uh, export and import into. Uh, so you can have 2,000 contacts, and you can send out 10,000 emails a month. Now, you, you think that's a lot, but when you consider the volume at Tech for Senior and that we're sending two, e two newsletters out a week, 10,000 comes up pretty quick. So, uh, so under the free version, you can send out... Um, uh, up to 10,000 a month. The email goes out extremely fast. It works well. I've had no trouble with it whatsoever. Uh, the database uh, to uh, from My Club Circle was easy. You just exported it out and it simply imported it right into My Club Circle. I had no trouble with that at all. Um, now, it, uh, it now offers uh, a website creation tool so you can uh, build your website right within MailChimp. And it's simple. I mean, this is just as simple, maybe even simpler than Google Sites. It is, it is so, it really is amazing how simple it is. Uh, so whether you're creating email, the, the, way you, you, the way you can build your email templates um, is exactly the same software that you would use to, to create your website. And it is, a three-year-old could do it, trust me. Um, now the other thing is is included in the free package is the web hosting service. So in fact, if you uh, wanted to use the Mailchimp domain name, then again they would provide that and they would create a uh, a domain for a, a domain name for you, and they would, but it would be a, a Mailchimp one and in the free package. Now here's the kicker. Um, if you wanted to use your own domain and you had already paid the $30 and you had registered, you can import that and use it uh, within the MailChimp free package, uh, which is, is really cool. Because when you look, if you go out in the internet and you look around, I looked at hundreds of companies that offer free stuff, right? When it all boils down to actually doing the deed, Here's where they get you. It's it's all free and everything is going fine. But if you want to use your own domain so that you're silvercomctc.com and you want to use that, it's thirty dollars a month, 
right? It's always like that. And the other thing they get you on is SSL. This is your secure, this is HTTPS. You want a secure socket in there and you want it to be um, HTTPS. And again, uh, you get everything going, you get it all ready to go. And an HTTPS is another $20 a month. And you have to have that if you're going to be holding and using a personal data. Now, that is all included in Google. So Google has that as, uh, as a, um, uh, over in, at the uh, Google Sites, that is all included. So that's pretty cool. But in MailChimp, that's included as well. You can bring your own domain in and they will also, it is HTTPS as well. And that's all included in the free plan. So that really makes, seals the deal for this. This is is really an unbelievable package. And that's why uh, for pretty small businesses, this is so easy to use. Uh, if you wanted to set your own, dom if you didn't have your own domain and you wanted to uh, create a, a, a domain service for yourself, they would do that and help you with it, but that's not included in the free part of it. So it is it is what it is, and I think um, I am, I've been using uh, MailChimp now to send out our uh, letters with uh, uh, Tech for Senior now for about, uh, oh, about eight months, and I'm so pleased with it. Uh, I've had no trouble with software, so easy to use. It's just, it just, it works well. So, uh, is this for everyone? Is this, the, this is an option for larger clubs who need more, uh, more email. They need, uh, they need, uh, uh, you know, they need a larger scale. This is certainly, certainly a good option for you. For the smaller clubs, uh, what I said before is, um, is is uh, is just a Gmail would probably work well for you. At least that's how I've worked, and that's my advice. But it gets better, and here's what my next suggestion is. All right, I saved the best for the last. Now, what would the ideal software be? Well, it should be free. It should be a platform that everyone used. Should have a database. Should have email. There should be a calendar and there should be a website involved in this. Um, it should offer some social interaction. Uh, it should be secure. And probably because it's your club, you want some sort of restricted access to this because you probably have dues and people paying. So you want some restricted access to that, uh, depending how you want to organize it. So where do we go with this? All roads lead us to Facebook. Interesting, eh? Let's talk a little bit about this. Now, I want to talk today about a Facebook page, not a Facebook profile. We're going to talk a little bit about the difference of those in a minute, but most of you are familiar with a Facebook profile. What we're going to talk about today is a Facebook page, which is a business page, uh, which most businesses in the world have a Facebook business page. You can't do business in the world if you don't have this. So it is, um, there's lots written about it. And in Tech for Senior, we of course have, as I mentioned to you before, we have a website and this is called www.techforsenior.com. We also have a business page, Tech for Senior, and it is on Facebook. So um, you'll see here it's uh, facebook.com forward slash tech for senior. So this is uh, our website. This is our website. Now, the important thing to know that is, is both these are searchable by Google. So if you do a Google search, uh, you're going to pick up both of these as well. So um, our Facebook, so if you had it, a club and you had only a web page on Facebook, that would still be searchable by Google. So you wouldn't need a donate domain name. You wouldn't need uh, all the other things we talked about today is that it is uh, because it's set up for you and it is searchable by Google. Let me show you how this works. And here's a short video on the difference between a Facebook profile, which you probably have now, and a Facebook page. And then we're gonna talk about Facebook groups, which I'll get into in the final segment of this uh, video. 
Hi, Amy Porterfield here with eMarketing Vids, and this is Facebook Friday. And today I'm going to clarify the difference between a Facebook page and a Facebook profile. So if you have a Facebook profile, which you likely do, that's what you set up when you set up your Facebook account. So you go to Facebook.com and you set up your profile. A profile is primarily used for your friends and family and to communicate with them, post your family photos, your vacation photos, and just interact and keep up your relationships with friends you haven't seen for a long time. That's the purpose of your profile. A Facebook page is for your business. That's where you promote your business, your product, your brand. It's primarily for your business to re build relationships with your clients and let people know what you're up to in your business. So a Facebook page is indexed by Google, so you're going to get in the search engines with it, as well as you can build applications into your page. So you can really reflect your brand through different graphics and different applications, as well as video and photos. So there's a lot of rich applications you can add to your page. All right, now I want to talk about Facebook groups. Uh, Tech for Senior and Silvercom CTC both have um, have a Facebook page. All right, uh, we will be setting up a group for Tech for Seniors. This is a really good choice for for clubs. Uh, Facebook groups can either be public or private. Now, in most cases, that I would think you would probably want it as a private group because you would want to restrict people who come in. And who go out, right? Uh, so there would be some restricted, probably based on who's paid dues or however you want to work it. So there are two ways, two ways that you can uh, use a private Facebook group. You can have it as there is uh, some questions to answer prior to being let in by a moderator. Uh, and you could choose what questions you wanted, and then the moderator would decide whether uh, that individual would be let into the group. Once you're let in once, then you can come and go. Uh, that could be based on a membership list. It could be based on a, a, a password that you gave out uh, once they pay their dues. That's really, really up to you and how you would want to manage it. The second way is um, having a private group but it's unlisted it's not searchable uh, within Facebook or Google you won't you won't find it the uh, the other method I mentioned earlier that uh, is a private group is searchable and people could find it they just couldn't get in unless they answered the questions so in the unlisted form you would generate a unique URL for somebody and send it out. And when they clicked on that link, then they would be allowed into the group. So it'd be a unique um, link that you would send out. And again, you could, when people paid their dues, then you could send them the link, they click the link and boom, they're in. And that's how that's how it works. So you have two choices with a private group. You can either have the, um, the questions or you can have an unlisted, un unlisted group. This works extremely well for uh, computer clubs. I, uh, I, a number of computer clubs do use this. Uh, again, it's free. And once you're in the group, then you have all the socialization and all the things that you would normally expect uh, with Facebook. And I'm not going to go into all those right now because there's lots of videos on Facebook groups. But this is an excellent option that you should consider. You could use it in conjunction with a Facebook page, or you could have the page within your group. So it would really be uh, your choice uh, on how you want to organize it. All right. Uh, in summary, this has been Club Management on a Limited Budget by Ron Brown. I've included my uh, email address, admin at techforsenior.com. If you have any questions about this video, uh, it'll be posted on YouTube for future use. Enjoy your day.